tarantulas. For 120 million years, these big-bodied spiders have inhabited the earth. And yet, despite this length, they are still shrouded in mystery, fear, and misinformation. Despite their size, tarantulas are not aggressive, meaning that they pose no threat to people. They are not poisonous and have never been known to kill a human, despite countless myths, movies and television shows depicting them as bloodthirsty man-eaters who will stop at nothing just to get to you. This couldn't be further from the truth. Unlike pop culture would have you believe, these animals are far more complex. They are shy, reclusive, and prefer to live solitary lives well away from human interaction, which unfortunately, due to our ever-expanding population numbers and the need for more homes in towns and cities, encounters with wild tarantulas are becoming more frequent and more common. Our need for larger living spaces is leaving them without a habitat, less food resources, and dwindling numbers of more and more species in their natural environment. Tarantulas are found on every continent on the planet except Antarctica and have evolved to live in the most harsh environments on Earth, leading to 1,041 species in 156 genera being discovered and accepted by the World Spider Catalogue. As more and more people become fascinated with these amazing creatures, this number grows, paving the way for more opportunities for scientific research and understanding of these eight-legged survival specialists. People tend to think a spider's primary defence is a bite, injecting potent venom leading to their untimely death. But this is just a myth. When dealing with tarantulas, it's important to acknowledge whether the species is New World, meaning a species found in the Americas, or an Old World, found on the eastern side of the globe. Both have different defence mechanisms, but a bite is always a last resort. A new world's primary defence, besides a quick getaway, are tiny bristles normally found on the epiphysoma, the abdomen to you and me. And with a quick flick using its back legs, they shoot a cloud of hairs into the air, causing irritation, itching and discomfort to a would-be predator's skin, eyes and mouth in the event of a confrontation. Old worlds, on the other hand, do not possess these hairs. If a hasty retreat isn't an option, the tarantula will stand its ground and raise its front pair of legs in the air, exposing its fangs in a fret posture to a would-be predator. In hopes this display making it look larger and more threatening and ready for a fight will make its attacker think twice. Because of the lack of urticating hairs, Old Worlds do have more potent venom than their New World cousins, but despite its potency, it's still not medically significant to humans. In the event of a bite due to the size of a tarantula's fangs, there's more chance of mechanical damage being done than anything else. The side effects of any venom reported have been cramps, nausea, headaches, tingling, pain and discomfort in the bite area, but has never ended in a fatality. Because of this reason, handling of these animals is highly discouraged in the tarantula keeping hobby and should only be done for veterinary purposes or during cases of scientific study. Not only for your safety, but the safety of the tarantula. Tarantulas have a surprisingly fragile body despite its bulky and solid appearance. One small fall due to a lack of focus or the tarantula feeling threatened and fleeing could result in physical damage to the tarantula, resulting in serious injury or 
even death of the spider. Another amazing thing about tarantulas is lifespan. They are very long-lived animals, even though females outlive males by a considerable amount of time, males on average mature out and are sexually mature in around three years for most species. But females, on the other hand, have been reported to live up to 40 years, which is something to think about if you're considering keeping one in captivity. Another fascinating fact is the name itself, Tarantula, which in 1560 was originally given to a large species of wolf spider, Lycosa tarantula, found in the seaport town of Taranto in Italy. Due to the spider's large size and fear evoked from bites leading to the myth of tarantism, it was subsequently shortened and given to any large hairy spider found afterwards. Tarantula size can vary wildly depending on location and species. From front right leg to rear left leg, tarantulas on average range from 4.5 to 11 inches, 11.4 to 28 centimeters in length, and they can weigh from 1 to 3 ounces, which is 28.3 to 85 grams. But more recently, much smaller species like Teplakinia celadonia have been discovered. The exact diet of a tarantula in the wild depends on the variety of tarantula and what food is available. However, these hunters will generally feed on insects. They may also eat other smaller spiders and will even consume animals like frogs, toads and small lizards. Certain species have been reported to catch and eat birds, but evidence of this is yet to be captured and documented, meaning these animals have a wide and varied diet in the wild. Tarantulas can be categorised into three types. Terrestrial, from the Latin word terra, meaning earth, live on the ground, under rocks, fallen trees, and any other crack or crevice they may find. Arboreal, which means tree-dwelling tarantulas, can be found living in scrub brush, in trees, in hollows, or between the leaves of bromeliad-type flora. Arboreal species are less robust than their ground-dwelling counterparts. And lastly, Fossorial tarantulas are burrowing species known for digging deep tunnels and living their entire lives underground. Each one of these lifestyles leads to different challenges that these animals have expertly evolved to deal with in their own way, which is truly remarkable. Contrary to popular belief, tarantulas don't just come in brown and black. These large hairy spiders can also display wonderful hues of blue, green, purple and red. While tarantulas are mostly active at twilight, meaning they're crepuscular animals, which means vibrant colours are significantly harder to see, well at least for us, Researchers didn't know if they could even see their own fabulous colour patterns in the dimness of dusk. Now, however, a new study suggests that tarantulas can see colours just fine and may play a huge part in how these animals distinguish a predator from a potential mate or even food. Which also means this animal's eyesight is much better than we first thought. Tarantulas, like all spiders, have two main body parts plus a set of appendages. The two main body parts are called the prosoma, which is often described as a combination of the spider's head and chest, and the epiphysoma, which is often described as the tarantula's abdomen 
although it also contains their lungs and heart. Most of the appendages are attached to the prosoma. The appendages attached to the prosoma include all eight of the spider's legs, plus the pedipalps and the chelicerae. The legs of the tarantula have retractable claws that assist the tarantula with climbing and adhering to surfaces. The pedipalps are feelers that assist with moving and eating. They look like an additional pair of shorter legs, sometimes making it appear a tarantula has 10 legs. Between the pedipalps are the chelicerae, which have fangs at the end. The chelicerae are used primarily for manipulating food, but are also used in mating rituals and to take care for the egg sac after mating. The only appendages attached to the epiphysoma are the spinnerets, which the tarantula uses to spin silk. Also, a tarantula has several different types of bristles. The bristles are what give tarantulas a hairy appearance, but they are not made of the same material as hair. One type of bristle is the setae, which have a hair or spine-like appearance. These bristles are sensory organs that allow them to feel vibrations, detect chemicals in the air and sense the direction of wind. The second type of bristles are the scopulae, which are a dense network of bristles at the end of the tarantula's legs, which allow it to stick to surfaces. The strength of these bristles could theoretically allow a tarantula to support an object that weighed over 150 times as much as the tarantula itself. One interesting type of bristles belonging to only some species is known as the plumos or stridulating bristles, which the tarantula can rub together to make a hissing sound when threatened. So to summarise this video, tarantulas aren't the big scary creatures depicted in films, legends and myths. They are a vital part of the ecosystem and essential to human survival on our planet. They are a fascinating, intricate, delicate animal and we have only just started to discover their full potential. It's our job to ensure the ongoing survival of not just tarantulas, but all animals that call our planet home. And the only way to do this is to educate and remove the false stigmas surrounding these animals, which leads to the lack of care for their ongoing survival. So if there is one thing I ask of everyone watching this video, please share it and hopefully in time, the world will learn this message and come to appreciate the animals we all hold so dear in our own animal collections and also teach them that these are not blood-sucking killing machines that for so many years they have been painted out to be and maybe with the right education arachnophobia will become a thing of myth and legends thank you all for watching